the theories of failure are those theories that are helpful to determine the safe dimensions of machine component when it is subjected to the combined stresses due to various loads acting on it during its operation and working. My name is Jagdish Atore and in this video series we will discuss about the theories of failure, their applications and their safe criteria conditions. Do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any new learning video from the design gig. When we apply the load on an object like this bracket, suppose initially we apply the load of some amount which this bracket can sustain without failure or deformation. Then if we keep on increasing the magnitude of the load, then at some point the bracket will fail like this. How can we predict that when the failure will occur or what amount of maximum load the bracket can withstand or when the object will fail or what level does the stresses in the part needs to reach for it to fail? The answer is the part fails when the induced stresses exceeds their strength. Means when we stressing the part beyond its strength, then the bracket or the, the part will fail like this. But what is failure or what means the failure in the part or component and what causes it to fail? We can say the part failed if it gets broken into two or more pieces like this or if the part gets deformed permanently that is the permanent deformation like this. The failure can be considered if the parts reliability is downgraded or if the parts function compromised. So to prevent the failure we must know that what causes the failure. So the failure depends on the kind of stresses like tensile stress or the compressive stresses due to axial load or the bending load or the shear stress due to the torsion and transverse shear. Essentially the failure depends on the material's relative strength in tension, compression and in shear. Uh, the failure also depends on the type of loading like the static loading, fatigue loading and the impact or it also depends on the presence of cracks in the component. So if the design engineer speaking of failure can mean only or all of these possibilities. In short, the part or the component is said to have failed if it becomes unsuitable for performing its desired function. In some examples of such components like the IC engine crankshaft or the shafts used in the power transmissions and the other shafts or the bolted and welded joint used under the eccentric loading or the spindle of screw jack or the screw jack components or the crane hook and the crane components where the failure may occur due to the excess induced stresses or whatever the reason leading to the failure and the part or the component will not perform its function properly or it may not serve its function for which it is designed. Basically, there are two types of mechanical failure. The first is yielding and the second is fracture. So the yielding is results in a excessive permanent deformation which makes the part unfit to perform the function satisfactorily. So this yielding or the elastic failure mostly occurs in a ductile materials. Means for ductile materials the failure is usually considered to occur at the onset of a plastic deformation and on the other hand the fracture results in breaking the component into two parts or the components. This fracture mostly occurs in the brittle materials. Means for brittle materials the failure occur at a fracture. Uh, in some application where the components are desired to have a sufficient rigidity, the excess elastic deformation, even if it's not permanent, could be the reason for failure to perform the desired function. There is no sharp line of demarcation between the ductile and the brittle material fracture. However, a rough guideline is that if the percentage elongation is greater than 5%, then the material may be treated as a ductile material. And if the percentage elongation is less than 5%, then the material is treated as a brittle material. However, there are many instances when a ductile material may fail by fracture, which may occur if the material is subjected to a cyclic loading or long term static loading at an elevated temperature or due to the impact loading or work hardening or due to severe quenching also. In general, the ductile materials or the isotropic materials are limited by their shear strength and the brittle materials are limited by their tensile strength. 
Here you can see the tensile test specimen of ductile steel. The failure is occurring along the principal shear stress plane. And here is the result of the tensile test specimen of a brittle steel. In this, the failure is occurring along the principal normal stress plane. And the test results of a ductile and the brittle materials will vary under the compression. Now, this is the test result of a compression test specimen of a ductile steel and the brittle cast iron. Now, in compression test, the ductile steel gets deformed and the brittle cast iron gets fractured. And in torsion test, the ductile steel specimen fracture and the brittle cast iron specimen fracture like this. Now, let's discuss why do we need different failure theories? As we discussed earlier that for ductile materials, the failure is usually considered to occur at the onset of plastic deformation and for brittle materials, it occurs at a fracture. Now, these points are easy to define for uniaxial stress like a tensile test and can be plotted on a stress tend curve. They occur when the normal stress in the object reaches the yield strength for a ductile materials and the ultimate strength for a brittle materials. This is simple for uniaxial stress, let's say sigma 1. We can easily predict the failure. For a complex case of triaxial stress where the object is subjected to both twisting moment and the loading or we can say in combined loading conditions, predicting the failure is not that straightforward means it's difficult to predict the failure. For a machine part subjected to a uniaxial system of stress, that is sigma 1, the limiting allowable stress for the design may be obtained from the simple tension test, where usually the yield point stress is the deciding factor in uniaxial system of stress condition. But in majority of the cases, the parts are subjected to the complex stress system. So in case of multidimensional stress at a point, we have more complicated situation present. Since it is impractical to test every materials and every combinations of stresses, that is sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3, the failure theories are needed for making the predictions on the basis of the materials performance on the tensile test of how strong it will be under any conditions of static loading. So the different scientists gave the relationship between the stresses induced combined loading conditions and the yield strength and the ultimate strength obtained using the tension test which are called the theories of failure. We have different theories of failure like the maximum principal stress theory or which is also known as Rankine's theory which is suitable for the brittle materials such as cast iron. We have maximum shear stress theory or the Coulomb gas stress cast theory for ductile materials like in case of shaft. The next is a maximum principal strain theory also known as St. Venant's theory which is suitable for both ductile and brittle materials. We have total strain energy theory or the Hayes theory. This theory is also known as maximum strain energy theory and it is applicable for ductile materials, particularly in case of a pressure vessel. We have one more theory, which is maximum distortion energy theory or von Mises and Henke's theory, which is suitable for ductile materials, particularly in case of the pure shear. Now the failure theories which apply for ductile materials usually aren't applicable to the brittle materials and vice versa. And the theory behind the various failure theories is that whatever is the responsible for failure in the standard tensile test will also be responsible for failure under all other conditions of static loading. What does the failure theory do? It's quite simple. The failure theories help in finding out the load capacity of a component and it allows us to predict the failure of a material by comparing the stress state in an object which with the material properties like the yield, uh, ultimate strain obtained by performing the uniaxial tensile state. So it gives or it establishes a relationship between the ultimate tensile strength and the yield strength. The sigma y uh, that is the yield strength for ductile materials and the sigma u that is the ultimate strength for the brittle material. Now, in case of ductile material, the failure occurs at a plastic deformation and for brittle material, the failure occurs at fracture. The stress state at a point can be described using the three principal stresses. So, most failure theories are defined as a function of the principal stresses and the material strength. The function of sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 is equal to the 
ill strength or the ultimate strength now the failure occurs when the maximum or minimum principal stresses reach the ill strength or the ultimate strength of the material now by convention the principal stresses are ordered from the largest to smallest as sigma 1 greater than sigma 2 greater than sigma 3 at yield point in tension test the maximum principal stress is equal to the yield strength of the materials the other two principal stresses are equal to zero that is sigma 1 is equal to sigma yt that is the yield strength and sigma 2 is equal to zero sigma 3 is equal to zero for generally used ductile metals sigma yt that is the principal stresses or the like yield strength or in tension is equal to the yield strength in compression sigma yt is equal to sigma yc let's discuss the first failure theory which is maximum principal stress theory or which is also called as maximum normal stress theory now this theory was proposed by rankine that's why this theory is also known as rankine's theory now this theory states that when a component is subjected to biaxial or triaxial state of stress its failure occurs when the maximum principal stress reaches the yield strength or the ultimate strength of the material now to understand this mathematically consider a component subjected to biaxial stress like this and let us consider the principal stresses as sigma 1 sigma 2 or sigma x and sigma y so it can be written as sigma max is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 bracket square plus tau xy square and the sigma minimum is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 minus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 bracket square plus tau xy square the condition of failure is the maximum principal stress is greater than or equal to the failure stress in tension that is if maximum of sigma x and sigma y is greater than or equal to the ill strength in tension or ultimate strength in tension according to this theory the failure occurs if the maximum principal stress which is sigma max is equal to sigma y or sigma max is equal to sigma u so where sigma y is ill stress of the materials and sigma u is the ultimate stress of the material now we are having these two parameters because when it comes to ductile materials the yield stress will be the considered as like working stress in general and for brittle materials the ultimate stress will be considered as a working stress because the brittle materials will not give any indication before failure therefore whatever stress obtained at a failure point of a brittle material is considered as a working stress so in case of brittle material the ultimate stress will be considered as a working stress and that will be the limiting point for the maximum principal stress we need to consider the factor of safety for this failure theory as the as this factor of safety parameter plays very important role in deciding the sizes or the dimensions of the component so if we consider this factor of safety in the failure conditions or the failure criteria so this condition becomes sigma max is equal to the ill stress divided by the factor of safety or sigma max is equal to the ultimate stress divided by factor of safety for tensile stress or tensile loading the failure conditions becomes sigma max is equal to the sigma yt divided by factor of safety or sigma max is equal to the ultimate stress divided by factor of safety and always note that the tensile stresses are considered as a positive and if the type of loading is compressive the failure condition becomes sigma max is equal to the yield stress in compression divided by factor of safety or sigma max is equal to the ultimate stress in compression divided by factor of safety the sign convention plays very important role in solving the numericals so always consider the correct signs so for compressive stresses generally it is considered as negative and for tensile stresses it is considered as positive now if we consider the region of safety or biaxial state of stress system for a maximum principal stress theory we have assumed that the principal stresses are sigma 1 and sigma 2 so in order to construct the region of safety for maximum principal stress theory or the rankine's theory for biaxial state of stress system let's plot the sigma x and sigma y on a coordinate system 
axis to construct the failure envelope here sigma x is represented on x axis and sigma y is represented on y axis now to construct the region of safety according to this theory let's implement the four conditions the first condition as if sigma x is greater than sigma y and if we limit the sigma x value to the ill stress at a tension then it will be the equation of straight line this gives the result as a line parallel to y axis like this line similarly if we consider the second conditions as sigma x is greater than sigma y and consider the limiting value of sigma x as a yield stress in compression that is sigma yc this will give the result as a line parallel to y axis like this now the third condition is if sigma y is greater than sigma x and if we limit that sigma y to be equal to the yield stress in tension this will give the result as a line parallel to the x axis like this similarly the fourth condition as if the sigma y is greater than sigma x and sigma y is equal to the yield stress in compression then we will get the result like this now this forms the region of safety according to the maximum principal stress theory now if we consider the point in this region and if we use the coordinates of that point to design the component as a size of the component then that component will not fail it will be considered as a safe design if the point lies outside this region of safety and if we if that point or coordinates are used for designing the size of the component then the component will not be considered as a safe it will fail note that this Rankine's theory is only applicable to brittle materials such as cast iron. So the condition for safe design considering the Rankine's theory is maximum principal stress should be less than or equal to the permissible stress. Sigma max should be less than yield stress in tension divided by a factor of safety or sigma max should be less than ultimate stress in tension divided by a factor of safety or it can be written as sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 bracket square plus tau xy square less than sigma yt that is the ill stress in tension divided by factor of safety. There are some limitations of this Rankine's theory like this theory does not distinguish between the tension and compression and this theory assumes the ultimate strength is same in compression and tension and this theory does not depend on the orientation of the principal planes it is only applicable to the isotropic materials now let's solve one numerical for this theory question is a machine component is subjected to a stresses as sigma x is equal to 75 megapascal sigma y is equal to 50 megapascal and tau xy is equal to 45 megapascal find the factor of safety using the rankine's theory if the material has the yield stress of 350 megapascal now we have given the values as sigma x is equal to 75 megapascal sigma y is equal to 50 megapascal tau xy is equal to 45 megapascal and the yield stress that is sigma yt is equal to 350 megapascal we have formula for sigma max as sigma max is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 bracket square plus tau x y square so if we put the values of values given values we will get sigma max is equal to 75 plus 50 divided by 2 plus under root of 75 minus 50 divided by 2 bracket square plus 45 square so we will get sigma max is equal to 109.2 that is 109.2 megapascal now according to this Rankine's theory the sigma max is equal to sigma yt upon factor of safety from this the factor of safety can be written as sigma yt upon sigma max so substituting the values we will get 350 divided by 109.2 we will get the factor of safety as 3.2 this is all about the Rankine's theory now in the next video we will discuss about the another failure theory so stay tuned with the design gigs for more learning videos thank you